Well, here is the finale. Eravetti's greatness. Eravetti's triumph. Eravetti's death. Three acts, just as they teach at the Academy. <laughs> Screw the Academy. I'm a bard myself, and not the worst one at that. I know better than most that glory and grandeur last no longer than bubbles in a glass of fizzy wine. You know I didn't really want to fight you. But the fates of rulers in these lands aren't written by you or I, but by a certain fairy we both know. It's for her that fools like us stage our performance age after age. We rise, win, and die at her pleasure. I tried to outwit her, but in the end, everything turned out just like the old crow wanted. Well, at least I tried. Tell me, king, ruler of the Stolen Lands, Varn hold, and now, if you get out of here alive, Patax as well. Tell me, your royal highness, when you are done with King Slaughter and wipe my blood from the floor, how are you going to rule my lands? Why do you care so much about that runt? <laughs> Certainly, I'll tell you, why not? The assault on the mansion was his own idea. The only thing he had to do was infiltrate your group and use it to find a certain artifact in the Stolen Lands. You see, just like you, I am the plaything of a certain lady. She's been searching for that artifact for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years. And who found it? You guessed it. Our purple friend. All these centuries, and that magic chunk of wood was hiding under the roots of the old sycamore. I guess the whole tree grew from it. You and I, we are alike. Her twin marionettes, both dreaming of cutting the strings. I never told her I have the artifact. Instead, I've studied it, hoping to use it against her, and I can't say I've made a lot of progress. The only thing I've learned is that it can be used to throw people into love or madness. Well, if you win this battle, consider the magic stick a part of my legacy. I have answered your questions. Now it's your turn. Tell me. How are you going to rule my lands? How noble as long as they remember to pay taxes, right? All right, enough talk. Our lady demands an outcome. Let's give her a show. Sure, I could defeat you. I didn't even compose any final words. Ah, uh, well. You'll have to think of something for me. Hell no! I won't give you this pleasure. This farce ends here and now. To you, your highness. Now Pitax is your pain in the ass, and so is that slut fairy. Farewell.
Iravetti was dead, and good riddance. Our ruler added the crown of Pitax to the crown of the Stolen Lands. But behind the dead monarch loomed the shadow of a much more dangerous foe.
It was time to meet the real mistress of the Stolen Lands, the one who'd been pulling the strings to create and destroy kingdoms for ages now. What a beautiful place. Ah, oh, the way it sings of solitude. No, just look at her. Walking around the enemy's lair, enjoying the scenery. You're a crazy goat. How do you even survive without me? Canera, how... How can both of us be here? Is this a dream? I don't know. Wait. What's that noise? This won't do. If you hadn't done such foolish things right from the beginning, I wouldn't have had to do anything cruel. And neither of us would have to deal with the consequences. Canera, that's enough. We'll discuss it later. 
if we even survive. If you can even resist the temptation to scold and berate me. You're the one who started it. Oh, look! It's all because of the house at the edge of time. At least, we think that's why. This place, it's like it's split and exists both here and there, today and yesterday. Even the mirrors here show delayed reflections. I was wandering here alone, passed through the mist, and Canera was standing on the other side. It's a good thing I thought of going through the same mist and caught up with this dreamer. I was right on time for the Soul Eater. It wasn't real, of course. Someone had unleashed an illusion on us. If we didn't know that you helped save us from that creepy fiend, we might have taken the bait. Yes, and the Forefather warned us about it. What's going to happen now? How about we put off these worries for later? It can wait until we escape the dominion of the insane Fey Queen. We are ready for anything. Ready or not. But we can roast a few Fey along the way. Lead on! Ashes and dust, that's what this dwarf is. It would be amusing to find out how strong his faith is. Do you hear me, my loyal servant? What? What is this? Do I hear your voice? Oh, Grotus, do you speak to your servant in this lifeless place? It is true. Your time has come, Harim. Do not cling to this miserable world. Let go. Release your life. The Boneyard awaits you. I am waiting. Oh, I've waited for this moment for long. How comforting it will be to close my eyes and know there is no need to open them again. You believed in your death so much that you really died, Dwarf. Few can boast such powerful beliefs. Oh, it's true. I am sad to see that I almost gave in, taking her false words for the voice of Grotus. I almost felt the cold breath of the Boneyard. But... Memories returned to me of the feats we accomplished together. I remembered the lesson you helped me learn. Would Grotus reveal to me the true essence of the circle of making and unmaking, only to drive me from the world? I realized I had given in to a lie meant to take me from my path and prevent me from helping you 
confront our old enemy. Then I shook off the deadly torpor and awoke. As never before. And what have we here? Knock. Knock, knock. Is that the sound of your knees shaking in fear? I took you for a hero. For only a hero would be brave enough to come here. Or are you something else? A shabby, tattered bit of comedy, perhaps? I am hero. Great hero. Are you? Am I the only one who sees that? I don't think your master sees anything of the sort. Are you not put aside? Laughed at? Ridiculed? Treated as your tribe treated you? No! He is a hero, and so I am! I am I! Me! Hero! And, and I will stop you! No, oh, you contemptuous little thing. You cannot stop me. But if you truly are a hero, come to challenge me, then you may join the others who came before. In death. Anik! Oh! Ethna! Ah! That's not the way I wanted to get to the first world! You've dreamed of this for a long time, haven't you? To dive into a vortex of wonder and discovery, while your foes tramp the dirty roads of Golarion. The return here. Where it all began, the prototype, the precursor of all that is known to mortals. And it lies open before you. But you will need a mighty protector to explore the first world. Accept my help and my blessing. You do understand that your so-called offer, in fact, leaves me no choice. I am completely alone in the dominion of a mighty and unpredictable creature. A refusal might cost me my life. So don't refuse. And yet, I'm saying no. To put it bluntly, you are asking me to betray a friend who I deeply respect. Some friend would I be if I gave in to blackmail. I didn't expect you to get here so soon. Just a moment, I'm almost finished. Far from trying, she did kill me. Not that I was unprepared for such an outcome, but it's still an unpleasant and rather painful business. I'm not sure yet if I'm even going to include it in my publications. A painful death is not the sort of experience you want to read about over and over on a rainy evening by the fire. But guess who helped me? The unforgettable Nerd Sottenroffel. She seems to be settling into the first world quite well, and she hopped here like a grasshopper using her teleportation. She dragged my breathless body from under Nyrissa's nose, revived me, and brought me back here with a heap of wishes, half-mad stories, and a request that I bring her something she calls books, but which I call kindling. Of course. I just can't wait to pay a visit to Lady Nyrissa. I should like to help her become history, both literally and figuratively.